ADHD or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Am I talking to you? Am I talking to me? I got ADHD. It's about anything. It's about everything. It's ADHD. Welcome back to ADHD with me, Travis Mills. Today, I am joined by Mark Brazil, Jeff Cole, at Cole on Instagram. Hey. Otherwise known as Iconic Art. The, the two masterminds. Gentlemen, how are you? Thank you for coming on the pod. Thank you for having us. Thank man. you, man. Yeah, Excited. Of yeah, dude, me too. You know what's crazy is that I feel like, you know, Gary was obviously the first guest. Um, and then you hit me up on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And we just, I had somebody cancel and we just made this shit happen. And that, no, no like, fucks. We no, just went right for it. <laughs> literally. And the, like Gary, the only reason why he showed up was because he had a flight to Chicago that got canceled because of weather. And so he hit me that day and was like, yo, I, do you want to do the podcast today? I'm like, fuck, okay. And that was the first episode. I feel like this is a, re- a reoccurring theme here with. ADHD, and I'm fully okay with it. For clarity, we yeah. have never even met. We've known each no, other. No, yeah. Now. We've two, known each other minutes. for like 48 hours uh, digitally. <laughs> <laughs> um, how are you guys doing? You guys just came from another podcast. Yeah. We did. It was. Uh, it got really, really aggressive, so <laughs> yeah. uh, there was no cursing on there, no cursing on here. We're, we're ready to... Oh, you can curse as much yeah, as you want. Can curse, yeah, bro. you can do whatever oh, you want. Love yeah. it. Yeah. Love it. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Fuck Let's yeah. Go. Let's go. Um, what does doing two pods in one day feel like? I've never done that. Just another day? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just a conversation. Like, we had known Natalie, and it's just all about just having, you know, this is interesting because we've never met you. So yeah. This is this just, is we're, we're just getting, we're becoming it. friends right in front of everybody else. Yeah. This, this is, is unique. Nice. I've never done this before, but yeah. I'm into it. Let's fucking go. Well, for everybody listening, uh, okay, look, I've known about you guys and everything that you're doing because we have mutual friends, and of course, I see all the love and support on Instagram, but for everybody watching, for everybody listening that doesn't know what you guys do, why don't you tell them? Cool. Uh, I guess to keep it nice and simple. Uh, Me and Jeff own a company called Iconic. Uh, It's the fastest growing digital art company. Uh, It's affordable price point art from $70 up to $750. I do the business. Jeff does the creative. And uh, yeah, as you know, we partner with Gary and Scooter Braun. I have a ton of licenses and just two young hustler savages just getting after it. Super aggressive. And it's, it's been a wild ride. And Jeff, yeah. you used to do art for for Gary's sports company, right? Vayner Media well, or Vayner that, Sports? I mean, that's actually we pulled a Gary on a Gary. Um, <laughs> so we actually had a plan to get him involved almost at the very beginning. Um, and yeah, uh, I reached out, or I think they reached out um, for me to do the Vayner Sports branding because I think they just had the name. So I just did their style guide, um, everything else, and they asked how much. We said, "Don't worry about it." Waited about six months. Was that the plan all along? Or oh, was, yeah, for yeah. sure. It's always yeah. the plan. Value first. Yeah. And then We're we came. In, insanely strategic in all our moves. So it, it we came with out. a really savage email. Like six months later, I just <laughs> read an email like, we are disciples. We use all your ideologies. This is our revenue the last six months. I want five minutes with Gary. My boy, Justin, who's his, his like right hand on the sports side, screenshotted it to Gary. He's like, yo, give these guys 15 minutes. Justin screenshots back the conversation with Gary. He gives us 15 minutes in Beverly Hills Hotel. 15 turns into an hour. He's like, yo, I fuck with you guys. Come fly to New York. We come to fly to New York. And then just fucking, yeah. it's, 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 I mean, you, you know, when you meet someone that just, it, it vibes. Definitely. And um, yeah, we literally stayed with him until probably two o'clock in the morning at like a, in like a studio and just chopped it up. And obviously, you know, our company's core identity is all about inspiration and motivation and I mean, let's be be real. Gary's like the king of that. Yeah, so, of course. Um, it's pretty crazy because we actually, in like a perfect world, the two people that we wanted to partner with were Gary and Scooter. And then they just kind of came into our lives in like in a weird organic way. And then they both happened at once. Yeah. Wow. I want to know where the idea came from. Like, are you guys just hanging out on a couch? Like how many years, like, like yeah. what's going on? Are you guys driving in a car and you're like, yo, dude, we should, uh, we should fucking print some art and like no, sell I mean, it. We, we've been doing work together for like nine years. So I think around three years ago, or me and him have never been like the CEO. Or How'd founders. you guys meet? Oh, so we met. Time. You can tell that story. Yeah. Like eight or nine years ago, uh, I woke up at NYU, NYU dorm next to some <laughs> chick. And uh, this is the, all we talked about on Gary's fucking yeah. show. Oh, really? That was the intro. It was about Amy. Uh, shout out Amy. Thank you, Amy. Yeah. Oh, thank God. you. She's um, back. Yeah, she was just like, you need to meet this guy, this guy, Jeff. He's super creative. The next day I hit him. And for about two or three years, I independently contracted him. We only spoke on Gmail. Um, so it was really yeah. good. We, we created a really efficient relationship. 
Um, you can get really close to someone on Gmail. You can. Oh, Gmail yeah. chat. <laughs> the G chat. Dude. And um, yeah, and then I was always like the number two or three of companies and I always brought Jeff uh, on the squad. And I mean, apparently it does take a rocket science, but I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to see that Jeff's so fucking talented. Yeah. And uh, he just, I was never in the right spot. He was never in the right spot. And then we were living in Carlsbad, San Diego, Yeah. which keep in mind, I'm like a New York guy. He's a Chicago guy. Like he wears like fucking Jordans. We're in like sandal country. So it was like the weirdest shit ever, bro. Yeah. Uh, we were there. What were you guys doing in Carlsbad? Um, we were working for a hack company called Melon. You've probably, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. We we're working for a hack company. Dude, you want to know a crazy story? Yeah. So my dad is like, I love, I love my, I love the fuck out of my dad. My dad's a great guy. Um, my dad's very proud of his son, you know? Yeah. So like, yeah, yeah. yeah. People, be. people, just, yeah. I mean, he'll just meet the randomest people, dude. And like, the, like my whole like career, like my dad's called me up and just been like, Trav, I met this lady at the gas station and her daughters are huge fans. Can you like sign some CDs and like ship them? <laughs> and I'll do it, you know, for my dad. That my dad calls me up and he met the owner of Melon and he's like, you heard of this hat company trap? It's, yeah. And so that's how I know about Melon. Wow. Joe Mills. There that's you crazy. go. Shout out to Shout Joe out Mills. Joe. Shout out Joe Mills. He met him at a gas station. Um, so you were at Melon. So yeah, so we were at Melon. Uh, Jeff had moved from Chicago. That's why this is called ADHD, by the way, because it's it's just yeah, we're it just gonna goes. Go. It's, we're just gonna do. I it. have no attention. I can't even watch a movie. Good, a full, a good. Full movie. Okay. So uh, so we're in Carlsbad. Uh, miserable to say, yeah, pretty miserable. And uh, I own big social media accounts. Jeff was still working for Melon. I had left, and uh, he basically just came up with a synopsis that. Everybody on Instagram was consuming three things. And what were those things? Yeah. Um, I mean, it was either, you know, photography, memes, and uh, quotes, like motivational quotes. And everyone would just be tagging their friends in it or th throwing it in the DM. And that was it. So we And we Jeff was on the couch. Yeah. I was on the, on the computer. Came up with a random idea. Started dropshipping art. And February 27th of 2017, we moved from Squarespace to Shopify. We started doing ads. Month one, six figures. And then it was just fucking off to the races, super savage mode. We went, we were working 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. and then 6 p.m. till our eyes shut, part time for the first $2 million in top line revenue. Me and Jeff. Yeah. Wow. 10%, what were you guys, 10 doing, what were you guys doing um, for the side jobs? It was, uh, it's an MBA uh, blanket company, like a, a, a betting company. Uh, I know, it's, it's, I want to talk about ADHD fucking all over the place. Um, well, we didn't even finish bed. about the concept of, about Iconic. What? We didn't even finish about the concept. So basically, there was those three buckets of content on Instagram. Yeah. And there was no tangible way to for people to buy it. It was just consuming it through, you know, DM. Yeah. So I'm like, we need to a way to modernize, you know, memes and modernize these just crude quotes. What's the physical yeah. embodiment? Exactly. Of that? Yeah. So we were like, oh, let's just call it iconic and start making, you know, iconic modern day imagery that you know when people look back, you know, on our culture, you know, we were the the guys. And Did we, you guys uh, have anybody that looked at you and were like, yo, you guys are fucking idiots. Like, you're I haven't even told anyone. Yeah, I mean, it was it was kind of on the side. Yeah, and we was, just were, we were bartering posts on like big Instagram, big Instagram accounts. Give me this, some influencers. Um, not really because it was, it went from like so under the radar to then real. There wasn't really like a, an on-ramp of like, yeah. yo, what the fuck are you doing type mm. thing. It went to zero to a hundred like first month. See, I feel like there's two, yeah, it can go one of two ways, right? You can just like, just be fucking, as Gary would say, eating shit, right? Yeah. For a oh, long yeah. fucking time and yeah. just have everybody like, sent, you know, fuck you, you're not yeah. gonna make it. Or you can keep your head down, you can fucking work and it happens really fucking fast. But now, I mean, now that you guys are experiencing, you know, these huge pieces of success, you must have some of that, right? You guys yeah, have I mean, to have people. Let, let's get some clarity there. We ate a fuck ton of shit mm. for, I mean, I'm 33 years old, Jeff's 30. I mean, I've I'm never- 29, yeah. I've yeah. never had a real job before and I mean, when I was 28 years old, I was over $30,000 in credit card debt. So I was, I made more money in college slanging liquor and doing parties yeah. and t-shirts than I made until two years ago. That's how much shit I was eating, but wow. I was always investing in my craft, investing in knowledge. I'm a big reader. Uh, Jeff, I mean, is just 24 fucking seven on the computer creating. So I know, I knew that I always had it. I knew that Jeff had it. I know Jeff knew that he had it as well. And it was just, finding that thing, I always say it's finding that perfect balance between something that you're super passionate about and then you could put a lot of effort into it. And me and Jeff were just super passionate and we just, yeah. I mean, dude, literally from, we had another fucking job. 
Yeah. Like there's no excuses for anyone that's like, oh, I can't start shit. And keep in mind, zero debt, zero money raised. It was $29.99 for us for one month to get Squarespace. And we drop shipped the art. So we had no fucking money raised. Nothing. We also had no idea what we were doing. Yeah, not, no idea what the fuck we were doing. Yeah. What was the biggest lesson that you guys have learned? Uh, I'll say, what was the biggest lesson in the first year that you guys learned from starting a business? Well, this is the, f we actually just hit a year full time. Wow. Congrats. So, I mean, I would say, I would say e-commerce is, so we come from, uh, from the brick and mortar world, from the retail world. So like I was with a hat company and they're in Lids and Bloomingdale's and Zoomies and Nordstrom's, um, where it's different. There's lead time, you know, you have production, um, and you know, you're building for, for summer right now. So it's different. Our business, you come up with a good idea. Jeff's going to go home in an hour. He's going to do it. We're going to Photoshop it on a canvas. We're going to run ads tomorrow. Someone's going to buy it tomorrow and it's going to get shipped in a week. So we just, we entered into this new universe called e-commerce. Yeah. And before February 27th of 2017, I didn't know shit about it. And then right away when we got into this world, we realized that it's just the biggest learning lesson is it's. It's fucking animalistic for sure. I mean, people are copying our shit. People are stealing our shit. How do you guys deal with that? Um, always stay. Uh, anytime someone gets on what we're doing, we leave it. So once yeah. someone copies it, goodbye. We're on to the next thing. And then you can't you can't cheat this. Like mm. I just met you. We vibe. And we're gonna be homies now. Like yeah. you can't you can't fuck with relationships. You can't buy that. You know, how I always said money doesn't make you rich. Relationships make you rich. Facts. If you have good relationships, you'll never be broke. I completely agree. And then obviously Jeff's insanely talented. And then, I mean, there's a lot of things that we've been doing that just, you know, like we have the official Muhammad Ali license, the officially Marilyn Monroe license. And what when are we you doing? Guys walk into like, when you guys walk into like a boardroom, right? And you, you guys are like getting these, these huge licenses or you're sitting down with oh, Gary. It's a joke. It's so Scooter. What the fuck is going on in your head, right? Well, it's funny. Me and him, we, I don't think we, we prepared for one thing in this past two years, probably. <laughs> Like we prepare for no big meetings, no like investor meetings, nothing. We're going blind. Not even me and him don't even talk on the Uber there. We don't. We're just sitting there. AirPods you know, are on. AirPods on. We get in and then we go. But the only thing we prepared for is the Gary V. Ask Gary V. Show, and it just went completely the opposite. Only talked way. about Amy. Yeah. The only thing we talked about was Amy. Amy. I love that. Yeah. He's so we. I mean, he's laughing. he's a partner in the company. You would think that we'd be trying on, to Gary. figure. <laughs> Start selling some <laughs> units, bro. And he's like, nah, we're actually only gonna talk about Amy. And then he talked about my gray hair and my beard. Just complete. Yo, I got gray hair too, dude. You gotta, Yo, you gotta just own it. I just got it, a haircut, bro. but I'm saying like a lot. Like salt and pepper up in here. Like you gotta fans own it. always they'll comment, like, you have great. I'm like, no shit, dude. Yeah, no <laughs> shit. Tell me, tell me more. Tell me more. Yeah. I used to dye my hair. Now I don't give a fuck anymore. I just it's in my beard. I wish it didn't go in my beard. Everyone else would be fine. Oh, really? No, I like that. It's tight. It's wisdom. <sighs> I don't know about you that. You know? Uh, no? I don't know. I wish it was all What do you though. think Amy would say about the grays and the beard? I don't talk to Amy. Either. Amy, if you're watching this, <laughs> God comment damn. below. If you're listening to this, <laughs> subscribe. Hit me with five stars. What's up? Do you, guys, you guys still talk? Do you send her like Ironically a enough. Send her a piece of art, dude. That's exactly what Gary said. <laughs> and uh, I'm like... Very easy to get along with, and there's like not many people that I don't get along with, and I actually don't get along oh, with her. It grudge. actually, it's it actually went up in long grudge. I actually, went up aggressive. In, yeah, he called her drunk <laughs> on her birthday, so just saying thank you. Like every when, I, when? I, every year on her birthday, we like uh, say thank you somehow. Like, you have it in your, a joke. your fucking Fa iCal. Fa no, for Facebook on our on our always write thank you like once a year. Oh yeah. my, does she like it? I don't. That's that's a good one actually. We should check that out. I don't know. I feel like it's does. been a while. It should be here. And you were obviously friends with Amy too because she all you that. Yeah, and it's yeah. funny because at that time I didn't even do like digital art on the computer. I didn't even do logo. I didn't know. No reason why she connected us. Were yeah. you drawing on paper? Or no, no, yeah. I, I majored in the studio art. I've been drawing um outside of school for since I was six. So, what you want did you want to do like movies or comics or what? No, I just wanted to draw. Just, man. To draw. just to create. I mean, I literally had no idea what I was gonna do, but one day this fucking guy calls me up and Nine and years later, we're here. Until like nine months ago, Jeff did. So I was doing all the business. He was doing all the Not creative. nine months ago. Give me like a year and a half. A year, whatever it is. Jesus. Time uh, flies when you're having fun. Yeah. I mean, Gary was like one of the main people responsible for it. <clears throat> He's now taken like a liking to business. So now he like puts his input on the business side. But I mean, 
You know, you should go on the, the art side. No, I shouldn't. Yeah. Damn, you guys want to switch seats? <laughs> we'll get you an iPad in here. We should do that, you though. Start, yeah, yeah. We should do where you, you do the art. And You're going to get on a huge deal. conference call with all the investors. <laughs> he makes fun of me because all the ideas I give him, they just they just don't do well. He's got a, I mean, we've done over. Like, I want to know, okay, what is the worst idea that, that he's pitched you? Oh, man. I would love I to show. I don't want to embarrass yeah. him on. on I would on love here. to show him some of the pieces that I thought were going to be bangers. And Online? The, yeah. Yeah, okay. Can we, what, what, uh, website? Uh, iconic.com. Yeah, let's. Is, ben, is, is Benji Billions, is Benji Billions a lot? I hope it's not. Shout I don't want to even right show now. that. Uh, I-K-O-N-I-C-K. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, yeah, we got it. I-C-K. Right okay, Benji Billions is a multicolored. I-C-K. Yeah, we don't even, yeah, that's fine. But yeah, it, it's a multicolored, like. Um, dollar bill. Dollar bill. Fire. Or a uh, hundred dollar bill. Oh, here we go. What about no ceilings? Oh, look at that. No ceilings is a banger. <sighs> All right. Look, Iconic canvas art right there. Look at that SEO. We got that the ad right up right there. Damn, <laughs> you guys are official. Here we go. Is it the ro- it's it's the That's right. Go to the, go to the search bar in the top right. Let's try Benji. Oh, this B- is good it's not live. We can B E N J I Let's see if Benji Billions is up. He literally begged me to do this piece. Benji Billions was originally <laughs> going to be the alter alias of Iconic. Benji Billions was the name that I was going to use. So we could do, yeah, come on. Oh, bro, right? You would think that's like a like a, 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 a reliable banger. At least it would be middle of the pack, right? Yeah. Nothing, bro. Wait, you guys have sold... Not nothing. nothing. Okay, no. but, okay. Not, no. <laughs> You're exaggerating. Well, be, yeah. <laughs> come on, bro. <laughs> Just like, hey, hey. Come on, right? Yeah. That's not bad. No. All right, so it's, explain to me um because it says it says that they're gallery wrapped and everything, Correct. right? So these are these are big canvases. Yeah. Correct. So all the pieces come from as small as 12 by 18 up to 40 by 60. They come in two different thicknesses, so like a standard which is 0.75 inches and then a gallery which is twice the thickness and then they can come in frames or not in frames. <laughs> Yep. The fat ones. The fat ones. I want the fat ones. The fat ones are a lot better, bro. Yeah. They are. Much more locks. I like that. Better experience all around. (laughs) Yeah. Um, What got you guys in? Do you guys, like, were you guys, like, collectors of art? No, it's it's actually funny. So I just started printing my own art to decorate my apartments, and that's how it started. I just wanted art on my wall. So then people would come over. We'd have to throw parties. And be like, yo, can I buy that? They'd literally offer me money to take it off the wall. You turned your house into a gallery. Yeah, and then and then once we moved to San Diego and brought some of those pieces on that in that shitty apartment, that was probably the only cool thing about that Carlsbad apartment was the art we brought. And then, like, yo, let's just start selling this shit. I managed an artist. His name's Timmy Sneaks. Yeah, huge celebrity clientele. Like Kevin Hart's got this. Like, all the pieces were very expensive. Mm-hmm. All the emails people couldn't afford the art. So I was like, wow, there's a huge hole in the price point art business. Dropped a limited time print. Made a lot of money. And I was like, wow, there's a huge hole in the market. Wow. That's when I saw the whole, that white space in the market. And uh, obviously, you know, on Instagram all the time, just didn't see anything. And that mixed with like with the epiphany that Jeff saw. And then obviously his talent and his speed. We literally started drop shipping art off the same vendor that he got his bullshit college stuff from six, seven yeah. years it's ago. A, it's actually funny at their like, um, their yearly meetings when they have the whole entire company this there. They like, Go back to, I think, 2011. They're like, this kid printed this canvas through us through like one of their ads on Google. And like now they're like our multi million dollar vendor. Like, this is now iconic just because I found their ad. Wow. Highlighting the importance of customer service. That's what it is. Yeah. So they're saying, hey, you guys took care of this one random kid in 2011. And now, I mean, they're doing. And you guys have been with them ever since. Yeah. We've stayed stayed with the same people. And um, it's, it, it's been crazy because obviously there's, you know, every single canvas company in the world has been coming after us and, you know, coming with lower pricing and we can do this and that and that. Um, but they've been just not only just reliable and honest and trustworthy, but they're just, they're like partners to us. It's like a family because mm-hmm. we, we really, you know, came from like shit. And then like, you see, I'm talking that shit. They were like, <laughs> I've, dude, dude, dude. We, start, we started doing volume and I was like, yeah, I need to meet the CEO. And they're like, whatever. So I go, I went the first time by myself. And then they yeah. were like, they were like, you actually know what the fuck you're talking about. I was like, yeah, I know what the fuck I'm talking about, bro. And then he came. Well, yeah, he flew out. He flew out to see them because we start a couple pieces started to go viral, and we couldn't manage the, the demand. Uh, yeah, the demand. Like me and him were inputting orders 
like till like 2 a.m. like like testing like how fast it takes me and him to do it like why don't you give your brother a shout bro yeah my brother he was helping us out my mom was helping us out my sister was helping us out his we brother like, is 16 and we were paying him 25 to 50 cents plus kicks for, yeah, to process per order wow dude it was no nuts. but then he just savagely flew there without even them saying he just flew there he's like yeah. fuck it insane uh what was it like when you guys made your first million it's Dude, so we the, don't give a shit. It's so funny you say that because I actually just watched a video on Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank. Mm. And he's like, all the bosses have one thing in common. And it's they don't remember the first th – because you don't remember when you make – you just keep going and going. And going. I, I honestly don't even fucking remember it. Uh, yeah. I'm actually about to get this tat. It's a Kobe uh, It's a Kobe quote. I fucking love it. It's rest at the end, not in the middle. And I, I really live by that quote. Um, I just – Dude, we haven't done shit yet, you know? And like the Gary and Scooter thing, you know, the traditional human would be like excited. Fuck that. Like we need, we need to make them look like they were right by investing in us, you know? So for us, a million, five million, 10 million, I really don't give a fuck. We have much bigger ambition than that. We're just starting. There's so much left for us to do that like, yeah. we're having so much fun. I love my team, Jeff's my fucking brother. And like, we just, we haven't done shit yet, bro. There's so much to fucking do. We're just hungry and just savage for more. Jeff, are you the same way? Yeah, like, that's like a joke between my friends. It's like, oh my God, like this happened to you. Like, what are you doing to celebrate? We're like, nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Like, literally, me and Mark will look at each other like, dope. And that's it. And that's, that's like a five seconds of celebrating. And then we're back to, like, we enjoy this shit, you know? It's like, and that's another thing that, like, Scooter, you know, we talk a lot and, He's always like about enjoying the journey and like we just enjoy, every single day we enjoy the process. We enjoy the people. We enjoy the journey. So like obviously the money's great, but it's just we just love every single day of this shit. So and how'd you meet Scooter Braun? So Scooter, um, interesting story. Um, someone that was in my fraternity, he was one of my pledges in my fraternity. His best friend growing up, I grew up in Long Island. He grew up in Long Island. His best friend managed. Remember Hoodie Allen? Yeah. Hoodie so Allen. He listened to... Shout out Hoodie Allen. This is the <laughs> podcast. There you go. So Hoodie Allen, um, my friend Michael George managed Hoodie Allen. So Michael George was moving to California. Okay. The day he gets to California, he's got uh, a lease and such. Um, breaks up with Hoodie Allen. So he's fucked in California. I'm living in California starting with a hat company. My homie Lee, who was in my fraternity, was like, yo, meet up with this dude. And I was just a good dude to him. I was just like, you know, bringing him to meetings, trying to hook him up just because Lee was like my little homie from my fraternity. So that happened. So I just was nice for just no reason, just nice to a friend of a friend. Fast forward a couple of years later, I mean, fast forward a couple of months later, he discovered Martin Garrix, okay. which we all know what the fuck happened with Martin Garrix. Yeah. So he managed Martin Garrix. So his shit blew up. He brought EDM to Scooter. So he goes under Scooter's arm. And then I'm bringing shit to Michael because I was CMO for, I was seating shit. I was bringing him. You're bringing him hats. All and that shit. And just showing up. And he's like, and he was just like, you know, he was best friends with Lee who knew me from college. And he's like, bro, what is all this shit? That you keep? <laughs> and then finally, maybe like, I don't know how long ago it was, maybe like a year and a half ago, he was like, yo, Scooter would fuck with this shit. And uh, he just- About the art. About yeah. the art. Yeah. Um, because Scooter's actually really passionate about art. He's super low about it, but he's like crazy on the art shit. Yeah. And uh, yeah, one day we met and dude, like I said, man, you just know when you meet someone, like right fucking away. He's like, yo, I fuck with you guys. What are we doing? Let's go. <laughs> and then that happened. And then we were talking with Gary and then Gary and Scooter were homies because they both like the Jets and the oh, Jets shit. fucking, they're in misery together. And then we were just like, they had never, never done a deal together. So I was like, yo, let's fucking do this shit. So we were negotiating side by side with both of them. And then Gary was like, yo, let's, let's hit the market with both of us at once. Let's fucking drop bombs. And then we just dropped. What does that group text look like, dude? Just the, the there's actually no, there's actually no, they're, they're individual. There's no group text. I told um, you, I told you the fucking, the microphone thing, it, it has a mind of its own over getting here. Getting fucking gas. That would be the most crazy group text, us four. Gary Vaynerchuk. Scooter's a Ron. funny on the, uh, the animated GIFs. So Scooter is very competitive, but obviously we know Gary is, but like Scooter's like the low key competitor and then like Gary's like the, you know, blabbermouth competitor. I'll let you know. Let's talk about that yeah. real quick. So Scooter. Let's talk competitiveness. I mean, push-up contests in the meetings. That's happened multiple times. Really? Yeah. Multiple times, push-up contest. Who wins? Um, it's actually never been him versus me. It's been him versus Will and then him versus himself in the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> How do you have a fucking push-up contest <laughs> Bro, with he's, yourself? He was going to be with you, though. He's He was gas. I don't know why I didn't get it. But do you get, like, a handicap for, like, the second time you do it? Because, like, the the you 10 minutes ago I already agree. put in some work. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm a, I'm a pull up guy too. I don't, I said I'm a pull up <laughs> okay. guy. And then Gary, you want to talk about fucking competitiveness? You tell him about that one, Jeff. That's a fucking good one. Oh uh, yeah, no. So we uh, we was this the? Oh no, this was before the Ask Gary V show. We went on um, just to meet with him for the second time. We were with him all day. I think we got there really early in the morning. You know, working all day, and then um, we were gonna go to the studio with him. Um, and he was bringing some rappers, and they were doing some stuff. And we, you know, we were in the studio too, working, like talking, conceptualizing, until like one thirty two a.m. And this was like the longest day ever. Like, in, like New York just brings obviously a whole other animal out in us. Yeah. So like, oh yeah, one thirty two o'clock, we're still doing it. And like, then we realized we had a, a meeting with the NBA like at eight a.m. that morning. So we're like, yo, Gary, like, we the gotta NBA. go. <laughs> yeah. We're like, Gary, we gotta go. We have a meeting with the NBA at 8 a.m. And he's like, oh, you guys are pulling a half day today. Pulling a half day. And that's who Gary is. Yes. Yeah, 16 hour days are half days. How was the NBA home. meeting the next day? We got the NBA license. I, I was yeah. gonna say, you obviously yeah. got the license. Yeah. Yeah. It worked out good. No, yeah. We lay him up and fucking smack him out the park, bro. If you guys co could collab with anybody uh, on some art, who, like, wow. like no your, one has ever your, asked. Wow. Me, I want like your top, like, like your top five collabs that you guys, you know, that you guys want. If you could, if you could collab. This with is gonna anybody. be good because all these are gonna go down. We're gonna manifest. And it's gonna be fucking here. You right can here. come back to this podcast. A so couple of them I can't say. ADHD. Yeah, be, think about who you're yeah, going to say. Really Don't say anything silly of, right now. Yeah. Um, oh, but we can't cut it out. But, oh, dude, yeah. recently, uh, you ever hear this guy, Evan Carmichael, on YouTube? It's, like, all, like, those top ten success videos. Okay. I'm, like, huge into it. And I discovered, like, Kobe through him, like, just more Kobe content. Dude, yeah. I've been consuming Kobe content. Bro, he's the fucking man. Like, have you, you really were, <laughs> all YouTube shit. Were, were you never a Lakers fan? No, I'm from New York. Okay. But, and, like, I'm, I'm a fan, but I'm not, like... Like his like strategies and like his savage like the mental dude like you know he was a rapper right I didn't know that no, Kobe are you serious no. you had that RBL uh, yo can you pull up YouTube uh it's it's uh Kobe and Shaq they had a fucking song uh but Kobe's name was um it wasn't it was like some K but uh was that when he was wearing that all white suit he was doing the oh with bro the there's a couple man I mean he put out I had a I had a Kobe album when I was like like I feel like they all old. like like that era all of them kind of tried to do that oh for sure like Shaq was doing yeah, it well, Shaq Shaq's was, still doing it Shaq was really rapping here we go wow well, that, okay that's wow Jeff Tyra with Banks. the call out on the white on the but, white uh, suit. Kobe Bryant featuring Shaq oh Look. my god <laughs> yeah, we got audio crank this shit right, we got to bring that Shaq apparel back. Oh. oh, we can't get the audio. Well, Let's please remember, so especially Kobe. on the web series, I want to pop up. Yeah, but yeah, yeah Kobe. Yeah, you can definitely, uh, you can go yeah. listen to that. I don't know if we'll get copyright stricken anyways. Three Times Dope came out in 1998. I was nine years old. So yeah, uh, it's not good. I'll tell you that. Yeah. It's not good. Mine would definitely be sorry, Jordan. Sorry, Shaq yeah. and Kobe. <laughs> Mine would definitely be MJ for sure, Jordan. Oh yeah? Yeah, I've done for, some for work for, for Jordan Brand, but I want to like work with him. Mm. Like, I want to sit in a room with him and like create some shit. How many Jordans do you have? Oh, no. I don't know. A lot? More than I can count. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He's got a disgusting collection. Disgusting. My whole room is just shoes. It's, do you it, know? It like, creates like, the what's furniture. What's the oldest pair of J's that you have? Probably the, the Motorboat Jones are my oldest. What Was year? it the nines? Okay. So I don't know what year that would be. Damn, I used to have a pair of nineteen like eighty five bread ones. But I still have like my t my like Iverson T Mac shoes. I used to ball in when I we, when we were kids because I'm thirty. So I'm twenty nine. Yeah. I remember those. So like I still have those shoes. Dude, like, I had the fucking I had those shoes with the rims in them. Uh, same the spinners. The spinners. Dude, the Dada. Yes. I had, first of all, I had three. My dad actually. My dad. <laughs> my I, I got into sneakers because of my dad. He actually had the most badass sneaker collection that no one's ever heard about. But he had, he liked the spinner so much, he bought five pairs of spinner shoes. My dad, like, he's this Jewish guy, like, <laughs> short Jewish guy. And he's like, yo, like, you should get a pair too. I'm like, for sure. Like, I love Spreewell. His dad um, knows, like, Gucci lyrics. Yeah, my dad's a, a, oh, really? a total G. He yeah. had, he had a, an entire shoe closet that was bigger than, like, my room right now. But yeah, he gave me a pair of spinner shoes. And the most embarrassing thing, I wore them to school the next day. And they were so loud in class. I was embarrassed all day. Or one day, it would just go. Tss, 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 oh, I rocked the sneak around. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think this ever hit like the the New York mark. I've never seen these before. The, what this? Oh my god, dude! I know. Hey, I know. Yeah, I know. and actually, I think I still have a pair in storage. 
But um, and I sold a pair on eBay, I think five years ago. No, they're not spinners. They're called Dada. Yeah, Dada. Dada. D a d a spinners. Bro, they're bringing those back. They're I not heard. Jordans. <laughs> but yeah, I had those. Yeah. Yeah. I also had some soaps. You guys remember soaps? Bro, they no. were the shoes, and they had they had like uh, a thing cut out of the middle, so you could grind on curbs and rails. Oh, we didn't. I wasn't in a skateboard. Oh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know. I don't even know. Ride, I don't even know ride a bike. Oh, there they are. There they oh are. yeah. Oh yeah. Those dude. motherfuckers were loud. Yo, I had a yeah. Those are those are sick. Those are sick. Oh yeah, soap shoes. Watch these. Look at these bad boys. Look at these. They were like the ugliest. Yeah, oh wow, are. those are really ugly. No, those are New Balances, but someone made their own. <laughs> there they go. Wow, that's disgusting. Yeah, and they had wax. It was like. Did you wear those shoes with the rollerblades in them too? That like the Heelys. Yeah, did you? Yeah, wear those? Oh. I busted my ass. On, look at those. Look at those. That was me. <laughs> uh, that's funny. I was jumping downstairs and shit. Yeah, but the, the the shittiest thing was you wear them to school, and when you walk upstairs, if you like, it it just like latch on to a fucking oh, stair, and you'd be clicking. Um, like a little tap dancer. Like a little, like exactly, like a little tap dancer. All right, so Michael Jordan, number one. Yeah, you can give me three. We don't have to do five. Oh, three. I don't want to dip it in three. We actually, it's actually funny. Most of the licenses we want to do, we're actually getting and we can't release it. Oh, wow. So that's really cool. Insane. But um, that one guy you can just not get to is MJ. But that's my like, I'm going for it. Have so. you guys had any like weird requests for like art? Like people hitting up to like print weird shit? Oh my God. He doesn't, he actually doesn't do, um, refuses to do custom. Want to hear something funny? We've done one custom. For who? Fucking bear. <laughs> Oh yeah. Let's pop up Bear for for oh, his Bear Digidio. For, Shout for, out Bear Digidio. Uh and the Burger God, and aka the Burger, Burger God. God. And you guys did the you guys did the teddy bear, the loose and it thoughts. Was the honey. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for his And now lovely. anybody that is somewhat tied to his network that's an influencer that wants a piece, ask for a custom and then they refer to Bear's piece. Wow. That was my fear <laughs> why we shouldn't do custom. You were right pieces. on that. Yeah, and uh, he has a hamburger joint. I'm going on Saturday. So, yeah, yeah I'll so, do that. Hey. <laughs> I would do that. There yeah. Are yeah. oh, you going to break? We did, we're mark. literally, so I was yelling at Bear yesterday for 25 minutes. How that man does not have his own television show or 24-7 TV something. He's the most outrageous human of all time. Yeah, he's. And I'm not. I'm not just bored his of voice it. Alone. I was watching the Lakers game yesterday. Oh, he was on it. We said, full, yeah, this <laughs> we're just doing the same shit. Oh, you you saw? No, we were we were Snapchatting him on TV. Of course. <laughs> oh yeah, I was just like, like yeah. after we get off the phone with him, we have to go take a nap. That's it, he just exhausted. <laughs> oh, so good. That's insane. Um, who have you guys sold a piece of art to that you were like, oh fuck, Ooh, this is Rick, crazy? Rick Ross story is a great, Ooh, that's a good great one. story. So. I noticed, so the only touch point uh, for social media that I still do is Instagram just because it's the most forward facing and it's like our main communication channel. So I still do our Instagram actually. And I'm on that shit all the time. So I saw fucking Rich Forever like bombed all of our shit. Right away when he like bombed, I go into DMs. I'm like, yeah, what up? So we'd love to lace you with some pieces. And then we start talking, we go going back and forth. And I was like, yo, would, would, would love to give you more pieces, create some content. And I was like, where do you live? And he responds back, Evander Estate. Evander, he lives in Evander Holyfield's old house. Doesn't give me the address. He writes Evander <laughs> Estate. I'm like, oh, what's the address? And I forgot what I said, but I was like, yo, we should chop it up. And I gave him my number. Two minutes later, I get a phone call from my MA area code. And I'm like, this is going to be like a handler or somebody else. Assistant. It's yeah. fucking Rick Ross. <laughs> and we got this shit up. We got What's this- the first thing he says when you pick up the phone? We Rose have it. You have it on video? Yeah, we yeah. have it on the web series. I think it's Rosé. He goes, yeah, it's Rosé. He'd be like, I really fuck what you boys are doing over there. I'm like, I fuck with you, bro. <laughs> it's so epic. And I was like, yo, we should, uh, we should just give you a gang of pieces and just chop it up. And then he tells us, he goes, I got 50 of your pieces in my crib. No, we didn't know that first. We what? Not. So well, he's got 50 pieces. He just said show. he had a couple pieces and he's like, yeah, you should fly out or come to my place. We're like, all right. So we fly to his place and obviously, first of all, just to get in is ridiculous. He's got two cop cars just sitting at the gate and then it obviously takes two minutes to yeah. get up his like- Just the drive. He's up. sitting on 200 acres, this yeah. house. Wow. And we get in there and it looks Four like hours. the Oval Office. We're sitting there and we're waiting for him. And me and Mark, we, we actually have a piece for him that we shipped, but we think he only has a couple pieces. We're like, all right, you know, we'll, we'll ship him a piece. We'll shoot content with the piece we shipped. Um, he outfitted every single one of his rooms 
at least all pieces. pieces. So basically every room would have like, if it was like a gold and black vibe, he would have our whole gold and black collection in that room. And then he would be going to his game room where it looks like Chuck E. Cheese and he would have all our gaming pieces in there and so on and so on. And we, every room we'd go into, we would just, there was like 10 pieces in there and we were just like mind blown. I definitely advise uh, YouTubing Rick Ross iconic. It's, it's a good one. Wow. Yeah. And he's just super, super real one. And they yeah, did him, and then we randomly just get like like um, I don't I don't know if that's like rude to say they bought it's not it's not like Nick Cannon just fucking drop bags. Yeah, we'll just be like random celebrities. We'll just yeah. see like the orders and be like, oh, they just ordered. Christoph Porzingis, yeah. like just random shit because dude, we're spending so much on digital marketing that like if you are a sixteen to thirty four year old male in a major city, there is no fucking chance you haven't seen our shit because mm -hmm. we are. If you come on our site, you fucked. We coming after you. That's just like what we're doing with advertising. So like, yeah, we just got so many randoms. But Rick Ross was like, that was just that was hilarious. That was just like he actually had. A, okay, have you seen like the video of uh, the pears? Shout out to pears. Yeah. <laughs> so he had a pear shrine. Literally he had a shrine of pears. Mm. These little pear sculptures <laughs> everywhere, right? And behind it is one of our like tropical like pineapple pieces. Yeah. So he had a pear shrine, and then behind it just. Like the centerpiece was one of our pieces. You you that and that moment you considered doing a custom piece for Rick Ross, right? Yeah. Just the pairs. It was just like every room we went to, we're like, this can't be real. It was like the most surreal, weird thing. Like, and he was he was like so chill about it. He's like, yeah, like I got like fifty pieces. We're just like, okay, <laughs> like it was wild. Did you it, guys ship him when you drop shipped him the piece, or when you shipped him another piece? Did uh, did he already have it? Like, was it something no, that he already no. had? Okay, he's super. Um, I don't even know what the word is, but just like very careful with his words, strategic. Yeah. And he's just. That's like the opposite says, of me. That is the exact yeah. opposite of uh, me. He, he's, he's very uh, calculated with every single one of his words. He speaks very slow, uh, super smart. Um, as much as like the flashiness that he kind of shows, he's like all about like investing. Like it was like, we had like a really, really good conversation with him. And he, and he was like a super nice, genuine dude. And it was just his main guy. I forgot his name. Tomcat. Tomcat. Love you, Tomcat. <laughs> Tomcat's like, Tomcat knew him since back in the day. And he's like, he's been this the real one right since the beginning. Did he talk about his Wingstop? Uh, oh, that's, his wing stop oh, he has a, there's a Wingstop across the street from his house. Yeah. Oh, my God. So like, it's like this huge gate and then his estate across the street is like this little strip mall. Wingstop's like the first thing right there. So he can literally walk across the street. He's Wingstop. a marketing genius. I know Diana Ross posted a picture with her family on the holidays and, you know, Evan Ross, all, all of the Rosses. And this fool quoted the, the picture and was like, why'd you take the picture while I was at Wingstop? <laughs> <laughs> He's really good uh, on Snapchat. Ferrari fat boy. Yeah. I don't really do Snapchat yeah, much. You still I, use Snapchat? I ran it. I mean, he's- Is he dead? I go on for a couple people. He's occasionally I go on there and it's just like him doing some motivational shit in the gym, just saying some weird, funny shit. He's good. You he's said, funny. You said that uh, you owned a bunch of Instagram accounts. Correct. Talk about that. Like, what do you mean you own a bunch of Instagram accounts? So I'd say probably, I don't know, maybe like four or five years ago, um, just leveraged and bartered my way into a deal to own uh, an account called Ridiculous Lifestyle. You, you, might, you might have seen it. Okay. So that account. And then from there... There's like a whole community. It's on like uh, mostly on like WhatsApp and then uh, the KIK app. It's called, I forgot how you pronounce Kick. it, Kick, Kick app. Yeah. Um, oh, you can spell. There you go. And basically it's a whole entire community <laughs> of people. A lot of them are like super young, like 14, 15, 16 year old kids in like Finland, like random people. And they own all these big accounts. They're all and, under 13. Yeah, they're, they're all. What? It's like illegal to be 14 in these like clubs. And the whole entire thing is all bartering. So they'll own an account yeah. with a million, two million, three million. And if I'm, my account is 500,000 and you have a million, I say, yo, you post me once, I post you twice. So that was our whole entire growth hacking strategy in the beginning. So in the beginning when we weren't doing paid marketing, I had this account and literally every single fucking day you would see me post. So you own an account with a million yeah. and you have a, a phone case company. On my account, I'm gonna post the phone case company twice and then you're gonna post my art. So every single day, three, four of these posts, growth, 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 and we were just leveraging off this one account. Wow. That, if you combine that strategy with an absolute insane work ethic, dominant, dominant. I mean, the algorithm changed, so it's kind of like the gold rush is over, but I mean, dude, that's how the company, and we were doing like a couple thousand a month. I think we did like 20 the first Black Friday at the end of 2016. Yeah, which, is a, which was a huge deal to us. 
It's huge. We were like, then. oh my God, it was crazy. Um, but yeah, dude, that that's it. I mean, people, I mean, obviously, you know, you consume Gary's content. He calls it attention. I call it traffic. It's all about just getting good content and getting it a lot of traffic. Everything's three things. It's content, traffic, and conversion. You have to have really good content. You have to get it out there to as many people as possible. And they have to find out ways to make it convert. And for us, we had Jeff's amazing content. I was getting all the fucking traffic. And in the beginning, when we were just, we were doing random discount, we were doing anything just to convert. So that's how the whole entire brand jump started. And that was like the genesis of the brand. And then we discovered paid marketing, which is on some whole other shit, which yeah. I highly advise anybody listening right now, like learn about digital marketing. Because mm-hmm. that shit is, that's how you could scale a company to, a hundred to, I mean, our homies from movement just sold for a hundred mil plus a hundred million dollar buyout. For ever, for all those like kids listening right now, you know, who are still in high school or yep. they're on co- college right now and they're like just wondering what the fuck to do with their lives. If you guys could go back in time with everything that you learned now, mm-hmm. what would you tell that kid that's, you know, sitting in his dorm yep. eating top ramen or, you know, living in his parents' basement or in his, in his whatever. And they, they don't know what to do. They don't know how to start. I would, a couple things. First and foremost, the most defensible thing in the market, the only thing that's defensible in this market is skill and knowledge. So invest Mm -hmm. in yourself. Money does not fucking matter right now if you're young. People have this wrong, because people like Zuckerberg who became a fucking billionaire when they were 22, that's a one in a gazillion chance of that happening. And I'm not trying to stop people from going after their dreams, but if you just are not concerned with money and you're only concerned about honing a skill or getting smarter, you will fucking win. If you're extremely smart, you're gonna you're gonna win. If you're extremely skillful, you're you're gonna win. That's just really all it is. So it's all about just investing in yourself. And like, dude, I was in fucking debt a couple of years ago. Yeah. Like, but I was fucking reading so many books, always learning. So I I had the fucking knowledge. And in the end, knowledge will always win. The network equals net worth shit is bullshit unless you have knowledge or strategy. Unless you have something to bring to the, to the table. You have, yeah. yeah, you need to, like, dude, I know people that have huge networks, but they don't know how to get shit done. And that comes down to skill and knowledge and, and learning how to get shit done. So I would just, dude, not even fucking care about money at all. It doesn't even matter in the beginning. You're better off just not worrying about that and caring only about getting smarter or, like, in Jeff's case, only concerned about, you know, becoming better at art. In Jake's case, only concerned about mastering video. In your case, becoming the best artist in the whole entire, like whatever it is, whatever you want to be, just double, triple, quadruple down on that shit and then fuck everything else. That's what I would say. What are you, Jeff? Uh, Well, so we've been doing this full time for one year, you know, 365 days, but, you know, I've been doing art outside of school since I was six or seven years old. So everyone who sees, you know, us, you know, grow this company and only took one year, like, oh man, that was fast. That was easy. Like, fuck those people. Took me Shit, since yeah. I was seven years old doing art every day until I'm 30 years old to like actually get momentum and, and pop. So it's like uh, there's this huge misconception with these kids now. They see, you know, all these, you know, viral stuff happening like oh like it just takes one video like that's the wrong mentality like like you said you need to really practice your skill set perfect it and like, dude it took a long time to get here it's the wrong mentality but we're in a day and age where it actually it, you actually can get lucky with one shit 100 so if you do actually put in the time to do the skill and the knowledge yeah then when you do like then you when you do hit then you're gonna stay on yeah because everybody hits but then they got nothing to follow it exactly, up with. Exactly, bro. It's it's so wild. And like our company is starting to, to get bigger and bigger. And we got we got two guys, Jake and Austin, who are like our, our creatives that are with us all the time. They're like, we joke that we, we say they're our sons. And we're just all this shit. We're just imposing on them. And like I've seen like Austin is a prime example that when he came in, our philosophy when we hire, it's who then what. It's from uh, yeah. Jim Collins' book, Good Then Great. Who? Who they are. Are they honest? Are they loyal? Are they hardworking? And then you figure out what they're going to do. Austin came on and he wasn't even fucking good at video. We look back at his old video. It sucks. Literally sucks. I don't even know how the fuck he got a job. He was sweeping the floors at one of our shoots. That's why we hired him. The who? Because he was a fucking grinder. And now he's 
listening and he's smart enough to know that, dude, to stay on the fucking boat, the skills and the knowledge. He's fucking good now. He's good. Yeah, he's, he's investing in his fucking craft. He's better than a lot of people we've ever worked with. Yeah, he's better than independent contractors that are like doing big ass, like, you know, music video shit. You think it's just because, I mean, he literally has to show up and he's being challenged every single day? Oh, uh, dude, our, I mean, I would rival our environment versus anybody. So it's, it's an insane, uh, just an, it's in a learning environment. Like mm -hmm. you have, you know, Jake, who they're like brothers, they're both 20 years old. They're fucking sitting next to each other every day sharing. And then they're doing shit. And then you have Jeff, who's a creative fucking ninja. They do shit. They show it to him. Jeff's like, do you do this? So they're just, it's just all so collaborative. And like we, uh, we'll hire quick, but we'll fire quick. So like if you fucking with us and like the second it's like a bad vibe or you don't want to learn or you don't work fast, get the fuck out. I don't fuck with you. Yeah, we only hire killers. Like you have to have killers that only. same mentality as us because we're like, we're breeding them and they're the acceleration of, of when they came on and now is like, even people are like, dude, this is incredible. And like, these are kids are 20 years old. So it's it's mind blowing to see like the acceleration of just breeding them, and we're empowering them to be bosses too, man. Like I I ask everyone in my squad all the time, and like bro, I've been like an employee before. No one fucking asks like, yo, what makes you happy? What are you trying to do with your life? What's your vision? And then I reverse engineer what they're trying to do. That's whatever you want to do. I'm going to try and fucking help you achieve your dreams because you're helping me achieve mine. Jake wanted to go to fucking Hawaii. What did you get for your fucking bonus? Hawaii. Hawaii. All expenses <laughs> trip to Hawaii without without us. He's just going. So like, I just don't understand that with people that like, I want to create more leaders. I don't think I'm doing them or me any justice if they work for for us for fucking thirty years. I think that in fucking 10 years, they're going to be their own boss. I'll probably fucking invest in their companies. I'm going to fucking make them animals. You know what I'm saying? I just yeah. don't, I just, people just aren't like realistic with like human psychology and, and, and feelings and such. So I just want to do whatever makes my team fucking happy because ultimately it's fucking business is just a bunch of people doing a bunch of random shit. So you need happy people. So they do the shit good. I know that sounds idiotic, but. No, no, it's true. <laughs> Look, I know, and you know, I, I know you guys are happy doing what you're doing, but if you guys could do anything else right now, if you guys weren't doing Iconic, Ooh. what do you guys think you'd be? I would be a paleontologist or <laughs> what? I would be, a, I would direct movies. Those are my two. Paleontologist. Yeah. All this motherfucker does is he collects sneakers, he eats cookies, and he likes rich hotels. He doesn't spend money on shit. He just wants the cookies and the hotels. Dude, you forgot kids. dinosaurs. That's the main thing I just talked yeah, about. Yeah, you got like a Jurassic Park dinosaur. Like a, like a Jurassic like Park tattoos. tattoos. Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Hell yeah. What got you into dinosaurs? I just loved it growing up as a kid. And like, it's like a reminder never to grow up. Mm. So to me, that's like my childhood. And it just makes, yeah, it just makes me. Did you like the new Jurassic Park? I love I love you Jurassic Park. I fuck wrong. with everything. Yeah. Yeah. They can put out they can put <laughs> the shittiest movie ever and I would fucking love it. So what about what about you, Mark? Um, I, I like like building teams and like inspiring and motivating and, and doing stuff like that. Like this podcast shit and like the web series. I actually um, probably like six seven months ago, the Austin was the guy that we hired, and right away um, we had a meeting with EXO, and the third day he met Gary. So he was like, "Yo, how the fuck are you guys not filming this shit?" And I just. I was never really, I've always been like kind of like a, a loud mouth type too, but I never really was like, like to be like in front. I was more like behind in, the scenes, behind the scenes, just yeah. grinding. And then, um, we started doing the web series and we were like little bitches to get the first episode out. Cause you know, we want to, Oh, I don't look good. Blah, 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 all that shit. <laughs> so we were like super soft with that, but then, then it started going out and then started getting like these DMS with like Johnny, the 17 year old from fucking Miami. Like, yo, you changed my life. And now I'm getting those like five times a fucking day. That's, and you know what? That's what's That shit's like this fucking podcast, crack. Dude. And I've never done crack before, but <laughs> that shit is good. Yo, and that, that's one thing that I've noticed with this podcast is like, it's it's insane where, you know, someone will stumble upon a piece of your content and they'll yeah. hear something that, that pertains to, to their life and, and it can yeah. change everything. And I know that that is something that Gary did for me, yep. you know, and that's, that's like a big goal of like why I want to have, you know, cool and inspiring fucking people in here. Yeah. Um, dude, I don't think I can't imagine anything feeling better than like how how that has made me feel the last six months like i just spoke at like this conference and just like 
dude, the people, I mean, you understand it because you have like fans. Like this is kind of like new for me, but to like, for someone to say like they're my fan and I ins like, inspire them, like that's like fucking blowing my fucking mind. Oh dude, it's uh, every, like literally every message I get about, I'm just like, wow. Some dude came up to me at fucking FedEx. Like this like yeah. 37 year old dude, like, yo man, love the podcast. Yeah, so I was, when I was getting this dress apart that too, someone came up to me like as I was getting, he's like, yo, I love the web series. Like, I'm like, oh my God. And he's like, try to get his way, like, to come in the office and get a job. Like, yeah, it's fucking nuts. Dude, I don't Do you guys know. Have people just running up to you guys with resumes and shit, bro. Yeah. What's up? Well, we, we just put out a piece of content of some guy who actually third doored his way into our apartment. Um, and it was actually it was genius, and we actually posted that, and now people are mimicking that yeah. to try and get in. So yeah, I mean, some guy called from downstairs. They're like, or the front desk was like, "Oh, Dylan's here." I'm like, uh, "I don't know, fucking Dylan." And like, people <laughs> come trying to solicit us some bullshit, and I go down. If someone trying to like solicit some like shit, like on some like finessing slimy shit, I'm like, "Fuck you, fuck yeah. off." So he came out, and there was like these two like little fresh Persian kids. <laughs> And they were like 19, 20, and they seemed like they were just like, kind of like how I was. Like, I, like you could just tell like that they were just like little fuckers. And um, they, <laughs> had, you, you, could just, they could, you could just tell that they were just like little funny, funny, uh, funny dudes. And they had, uh, they had a fucking gift. And like, yo, we're huge fans. And I was it, was like, yo, it was Christmas. It was Christmas. They're like, yo, we got a Christmas present for you. And I was like, dude, come upstairs. They come upstairs and they had a, they made us a canvas and it had um, a quote from the scooter, uh, scooter episode with us. What was it? Find your own key. Yeah, make your own key. Make your own key. So they made us their own piece. And then on the back, they had a whole note of all the shit they would do for us for free. And they mimicked Jeff's style and did like a one-of-one yeah. -one Gary. They did like a sneaker art. Design. Yeah. And I just, their energy was amazing. And I was like, yo, we're, we're doing a huge internship next summer. I was like, yo, let's fucking go. And then we posted that shit. And now we're getting like, now it's like 5X. And now people are like putting together like full length feature films wow. on like how to get the iconic um, and I don't want anyone to fucking knock on a random door. That was not, yeah, I, I do don't not need, do that. Yeah, I don't need that often. It works once. I yeah. mean, I feel like after yeah, the yeah. first time that approach is off the table. Yeah. Um, dude, your life is going to change with this shit. I can tell you right now. Like I did like a little bit of research on you and I looked like, obviously like Wikipedia and shit. Like <laughs> the best source. Oh, Wikipedia is awful, dude. Yo, yo, <laughs> Wikipedia is the worst. It's a fucking lie. Yeah. The whole what thing. about your tat, your tat on your shit? Something was funny. I remember that. Uh, no, dude, Wikipedia <laughs> once said that like I wrote like, or, or I did something for like, for like in honor of like an ex-girlfriend or something. And I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and they're like, his favorite, the fa his favorite strain is Who Indica writes this Kush. Stuff? And I'm like, what the fuck is this? I think it's crowdsourced, right? Doesn't anyone write them? I don't, you know, I think there's a reason why there's like a donate button on there like they really fucking need it like wikipedia <laughs> yeah. needs a staff i don't know anyone who's like yo where do you work he's like wikipedia dog i show up i type i type like shit random in. shit <laughs> sometimes it gets approved sometimes it doesn't <laughs> um wow so damn okay i need to i need to have someone fucking oh it's gonna happen now now oh, someone's gonna see this great and now they're knocking your door. Great, yeah. What 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 was it on your? It was a tattoo on your chest, and they said what it was, and it was Bone fun. Thugs lyrics. No, I, I, th I know it's that. Motel? And we knew we were gonna fuck with you, the Bone oh. Thugs. Oh, okay. Something else, something okay. with a, a three letter thing. It was like some fucked up shit. Oh, on my head. Let's, let's, FTH? Let's, 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 FTH. Yeah. yeah. Well, but what, what what did it mean? Oh, a bunch of things for the homies. No, what was the second fuck one? The haters. Fuck the haters. Uh, feed the <laughs> homeless. <laughs> Uh, forever the highest. It can be a whole bunch. Oh wait, well, here, here, here it is. There we are. Oh, we're on the Wikipedia. Okay, hold on. You got to update your picture. You look fourteen there, bro. The <laughs> there. No, no That's twenty sixteen, dude. No gray hairs in sight. Oh, That's God. me dyeing my hair. I got. Okay, what did have you dyeing your hair in the picture? Yeah. <laughs> I got my first gray hair when I was like twenty one. Wow. There we go. Yeah. Fuck the haters forever the highest. Oh, there, there you go. Is. What do you think of Bone Thugs coming out right now and just dissing oh, all the, the new? No, yeah. come on. Yeah. No, no, yeah I'm not that. feeling that either. Oh, no, don't do that. Why are you going to do that? <laughs> don't come out right now and try to diss the Migos and 21 Savage. Let's just not do that. I know. Let's just keep it's it. So, everyone's just like sad about let's it. Let's just keep it legendary. And let's I just, know. you know, let's just keep it like that. And then we're Dude, cool. Yeah, those guys. We got to timestamp what his Wikipedia looks like right now and look at it in like a couple of days and see if someone changed yeah, it. Yeah, someone. I think someone's good now. Yeah. So, so he had his first gray hair when he was 19. 20. Yeah, 19. <laughs> and then it's There's going to be a whole section about your career. All downhill ever since. Um, gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on the pod. Amazing, bro. This
this is my man. first duel. Uh, you guys are the first ones Hell to yeah. get the couch too. Oh I, wow! I kind of like it. It's nice. It's it's yeah. fun. Well, I'm okay. not even that close to him. There's a nice little gap here. <laughs> um, and you guys brought some art too. I'm stoked. I'm stoked yep. to go Amazing, look at bro. it. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to put some up around around the pod so we can incorporate it. Oh know. yeah. Um, but thank you so much. Why don't you hit everyone with the website so everyone can go check it out? Yep. It's uh, iconic.com. I K O N I C K. Uh, at Iconic on all social, and I heavily... You got a good Instagram. You guys both have good Instagrams, though. At Mark Brazil. Mark Brazil, Mark yeah. with a K, Brazil with a Z. At Cole, just C-O-L-E. And mm-hmm. definitely check out our YouTube, because our YouTube, yeah. if you enjoyed us just being complete fools and just being savages, and, and like the business stuff, it's called Behind the Hustle, mm. and it's literally 24-7, wow. every single meeting. Well, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm going to put the link in the description. You guys can oh, click it. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Hey. Ugh, if you guys enjoyed the podcast... Hit your board like if you're listening right now. Hit your board with five stars. Like and subscribe. I'll see y'all next week, every Friday. Peace out. Peace.